a beautiful Sunday morning in Coleman, Alabama. When I woke up that morning, I was not aware of a choice I was facing, a decision that I would make that would change my life forever. I was thinking, get packed, my wife and I get in the car, drive the five, six hours back to Mobile, pick up the kids from the babysitters, get home, get fast, get up the next day and go to work and school. Something that probably a lot of you have done many times in your own life. But first, we had to finish the marriage preparation program that my wife and I were presenting along with another team couple, Dottie and Roger. Got to the end of the weekend, last presentation, Roger stood up and said, we're going to change the format a little bit this time. And the format he was talking about was we, all the engaged would gather in a room like this. The team couple would share a topic on marriage. We would hand them out prepared questions, and they would separate as a couple to write their answers to them. Then they would get into a separate room together by themselves and exchange what they had and talk about it and then get back in the presentation room. That was a format. It was very effective. In fact, this program is still going on, and it's very effective today. So, you know, here's Roger, you know, changing it up. He said, I want you to get your notebooks, and I want you to get to a clean sheet of paper. And I'm going to ask you this time to write a letter to someone in your life that had great impact and influence. And, and maybe just somewhere along the way, you just never got a chance to tell them. So share that in the letter with them now. I leaned over to my wife. I said, that's not in the outline. They are not following the outline. My wife leaned back over to me, and she said, just follow the instructions. In some other words, I can't remember exactly what they were. <laughs> now, I want you to know that my wife and I we have a fantastic marriage, and we really work at it. I started following the instructions immediately. And when I thought about it for a moment, I said, you know, the letter I want to write is to my grandmother. My grandmother was this ball of laughter and fun, and she was made for service, and she knew that's who she was. She had very little money in her life, but any extra money she had, she would go out and buy for her family and friends. And she had changed and impacted my life. And here I'm an adult. I never told her. So I poured it out in the letter to my grandmother. We got back in the presentation room, and here goes Roger. Here he goes. He's handing out white envelopes. He said, okay, I want everybody to fold your letter. I want you to stick it in the envelope, put the name of who you've written it to, and pass it up. I'm going to put a stamp on it, and I'm going to mail it tomorrow. And if you don't know the address, I'm giving you a number and you can call me and I'll do it. The very odd, Roger was really irritating the fire out of me. The very odd, this is my special letter, he's going to mail my letter? But I was part of the team, I thought, oh, that's not going to look too good to the gauge if I don't pass up my letter. So I passed up my letter. Headed back to Mobile, life goes on. A couple weeks later, telephone rings, and back then we didn't have these noisy devices. We had landlines, and when somebody called long distance landline, it usually was important. My wife says, hey, it's your mom on the phone. Now, my grandmother was living with my mom. And immediately, I, I made that connection. I said, oh, grandmother got my letter. She loved it. She shared it with my mom. And my mom wants to tell me about that experience. It was not about the letter, but it was about grandmother. You see, she had passed away early that morning. And my mom was crying as she shared the news with me. A couple days later, I drive along Interstate 10 from Mobile to New Orleans to go to the funeral service. And I can't for the life of me get out the letter. It is all consuming in my mind. Isn't it kind of interesting in life, the things that irritate you, the people that just really rub you wrong, later on at times become the people that and the things that you're embracing. And I sure was embracing that letter idea, and I sure was embracing Roger. And as I was driving along there, I was saying, I sure hope Roger did what he promised to do and get that letter to my grandmother. 
funeral service was over in the cemetery. People kind of, you know, they gather behind different family and friends members. And then all of a sudden, it was just me and my mom. And I had to ask her the question that had so burned in my mind. She was standing there just totally enveloped in, in sadness. And I said, Mom, I said, I wrote a letter to Grandmother a couple of weeks ago, and I just wonder by chance if you know whether she received it. You know how when you say something or do something and it's not right, you get that feeling? I got that feeling. I was thinking to myself, why in the world do I have to be such a hurry to get my information? I could wait a couple weeks after my mom could grieve some. I could talk to her at the reception. Why did I have to be in such a hurry? My mom would answer me with words I will never, ever forget. With incredible sadness tears of sadness, and also with great joy. She said, Robert, yes, grandmother did receive your letter. It was so special for her. She hung on to that letter the last two weeks of her life. What had started as an irritation for me had come full circle and ended in a powerful special moment one I would never forget with my mom in the cemetery but that wasn't the end you see that was just the beginning I thought that was the end we went back home like you will go back home and back into your business and got busy a couple weeks later this is now about a month later my wife and I are given a marriage preparation program again and this time it's in Mobile and this time, we are given the presentation that Dottie and Roger gave. And you know, when I got up, Mr. Rules following Rob that's been converted over the years by his wife, got up and said, we're going to do something a little bit different uh, this, this session. And you know I added something else, don't you? I said, let me tell you about the letter to my grandmother. And for the next 15 or 20 years that my wife were involved in this association, this organization, I got the privilege, the great honor of hearing the stories of the impact of the letters, not only on the receiver, but the person that wrote those letters. And it was amazing. All these wonderful letters, but while, while we're doing this on the weekend, we're writing more letters. That, didn't, that wasn't the end. We're writing more of these letters. So one of the first ones I wrote was to my dad. Now my dad growing up was one of these kind of guys that did not say I love you and he did not do a lot of these hugs. My mom was more in line with that. My dad didn't do that. So I was a little bit uncomfortable writing a letter to my dad, to be honest with you. A week goes by, nothing, uh, nothing going on. Two weeks go by, nothing's going on, and where is Roger who gave the instruction about it? what do you do when you write a letter and you don't hear anything from anybody? And we were getting ready to go over to visit my parents in Alberta, and I'm thinking, I love you, Dad. You like me, and I'm your son, and what's this going to, boy, this is going to be awfully awkward. And I opened the mailbox, and there was a life-changing letter from my dad. Now, it's important for you to know that my dad and I loved each other before the letters, and we loved each other after the letters. But it was like single-A baseball going to the majors. Our relationship changed. It was never the same. When my mom passed away in 98, it was probably the one thing that gave my dad and I support was a, was a great relationship that we had. These letters changed everything about my life. There's nothing, even getting up here and talking to you and even to send a text or email, if you receive something from me, you can know for a fact that there was a letter somewhere. And you know, as I went along, it's kind of interesting, I started thinking I sure would be like, be like the person that would receive a letter like that. I would love to be that kind of person, so I started making changes. And I think started becoming a better person. I would love to sit up here and tell you, Rob Hackbart, just a copy of his great-grandmother, 
but it's not the truth. A work in progress. A good work in progress because of the letter and the letters that follow the letter. Now I'm going to ask you to do something, and then I'm going to give you a few thoughts on closing. But I'd like you to turn over to that line part of your car. Nobody's going to see this. And I would like you to write down the names of three people that you might consider writing the letter to. And maybe you've already done that for, and that's great. But three people that maybe you want to write to, or maybe you need to write to, and just write it down there on your card. You can write a name, whatever, you can write their nickname or something. And then I'm going to ask you to take your card and put it in your wallet or purse and, and take with you, and then close with a few thoughts. Names of three persons that you would like to write a letter.